This is a 30-year-old game, mechanically speaking, in the guise of a modern game. Elite Dangerous is a continuation of a series that started back in the very early 1980s with the release of the original Elite in 1983 for the ZX Spectrum. And mechanically speaking, it's literally almost the same kind of game. And that's one of the problems with Elite Dangerous. It is a modern game with very old school sensibilities. And right now, this game is a part of a genre that is seeing a renaissance with games like Dual Universe and Star Citizen on the horizon. Both games are looking extremely promising. Dual Universe being a game of space exploration with almost entirely user-created content. And Star Citizen is looking amazing with the things that they are doing with Lumberyard Engine, gameplay-wise and with a careful use of procedural generation alongside handcrafted models and elements and locations and stories. And Elite Dangerous is getting left behind. This game originally launched with a Kickstarter very successfully. It is being developed by the original creator of the game original visionary of Elite. And that may be part of the game's problem. He is very much stuck in the 80s. And that has been the issue that a lot of players have had with this game. Is the real lack of depth. Yes, there are lots of missions you can do go from station to station and star system to star system and do tons of missions for different factions and there are different superpowers that you can raise your rank and reputation up with beyond that there's not much story depth there's not much of a narrative to the story it just basically sets you loose in the universe that is vast and unforgiving with a extremely complex, overcomplicated, and convoluted legal system. And some mechanics that are just makes you wonder why they developed them that way. The engineers, for instance, allows you to upgrade your equipment, but it's a grind to acquire the materials upgrade your equipment with those engineers and then on top of that once you once you went through that lengthy grind to get the materials you then have rng on top of that of whether or not you will actually get something worthwhile from all that grinding it is possible that you could end up with an upgrade that is worse than what you currently have it is also possible you could end up with a great upgrade that's better than what you have. And therein lies the problems with game. Or with this particular game. And so Elite Dangerous is in a position where it is what I would say has a lot of promise. But with all the competition coming out from the other new games in this genre, I find it difficult to see how Elite Dangerous can possibly stand out amongst that crowd. It already has a particular niche audience to begin with, and there are issues with the game. Um, weird bugs and the developer frontier developments is very slow to update the game 
when it comes to bug. Now, they've been doing a little better job recently. But that's after going two years without any significant updates. Two years of allowing some significant bugs that affect gameplay in a major way to persist. And were finally fixed when the return patch launched that brought in the Thargoids. Horizons launched two years ago, the expansion. And since then, there hasn't been anything really new. It was launched as a season pass. And there hasn't been anything to justify the purchase of that season pass. There have been a few minor updates here and there, but no major changes. And even the return itself has seen very little content. In fact, you can look at a list of what was in the return, the actual content is dwarfed by the amount of bug fixes that were released with that patch. And that was bugs that were allowed to persist for nearly two years. But Frontier Development is promising that they will be rolling out content on a much faster, more regular basis. 2018. They made that promise in a live stream. Whether they keep that promise or not is completely up in the air. Whether they do that or not is completely up in the air. They have promised a lot. And I am skeptical as to whether or not they will be able to deliver. This game has potential. It has enormous potential. You can explore an entire galaxy. My friend and I just recently went to the center of the galaxy to see Sagittarius A, which is a black hole at the center of the galaxy. And there are few games that allow you to have that kind of level of vast exploration. It took us a long time to get there. First, we went to Colonia, which is the second human bubble out in the galaxy. And that took us a couple of weeks to actually get there. It's a very, very far distance. And then we went from Colonia to the center of the galaxy. That's a, a, it's a much shorter jump. A significantly shorter jump but still it took us a few days to get there now I'm returning to the bubble and I'm scanning systems along the way and that will earn me some credits that should earn me up enough to get a much better ship possibly an anaconda it is a very very versatile ship it's slow lumbering but it's possibly one of the most versatile ships in the game. So this game has enormous potential, but I feel like it's in the wrong hand. I feel like this game needs to be in the hands of someone else that can really do this game justice. And development on it has been very slow. It's been, technically, it's been around since 2012 and officially out since 2014. And not much has really changed. And the next big innovative new feature that they're going to release is Galnet Audio their online in-game news section. You're going to play that in audio for you in the game. And they touted that as their next major feature. It's things like that that are the problem. They say, you know, little minor things like that are 
significant features, and they're not. And that's why a lot of people are skeptical as to whether or not they're capable of really delivering features and content that players are wanting from this game. A lot of people do play it. Most play in open, but a much larger and growing number are playing in private groups because of all the griefing that happens in the game in open. That there's a lot of players that are not welcoming to new players or they just torment uh, new players for no other reason. That's why we have such a complicated and convoluted legal system in the Elite Danger. And they're supposedly going to revamp this system. And whether or not they get rid of these strange legacy mines and dormant bounties are which require flowcharts just to explain how they work remains to be seen. They're not being very forthcoming on the details of exactly what they're doing, what they're going to give us. And that's a problem. The developers of Star Citizen are infinitely more transparent in what they're doing, what they're giving people who donate to the game, telling people exactly this and this and this is going to be in the game and this is how it's going to work. And they're a lot more open to people about that. But they're not, but FDev isn't. Even Hello Games, the maker of No Man's Sky, has been more open to communicating with their community, or even building a community site so that they can actually talk to their players. They've done an amazing job of rebuilding No Man's Sky almost from the ground up, and it's become almost a new game. Whereas this game has not seen any major significant changes except to minor alterations to the UI since it started. And a lot of people who love the game and, lo and see the potential are frustrated by that. This has been Random Thoughts. This is Elite Dangerous. Thanks for watching.